We've been testing slim and sleek laptops for a while, so good news if you grow tired of them, because today we will focusing on a true 2-in-1 veteran. Behold, Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. It looks nice and fancy, but it is not as lightweight as you might think. However, Surface Studio does have a good reason for this weight. Microsoft Surface lineup has several characteristics and design strategies which are equally applied to all models. Take for example touchscreens, ergonomic keyboards, significant processing power, not to mention high quality multimedia components like webcams and speakers. The name of the model we are about to discuss today could come as a hint for the applications of this device. We are talking about a laptop designed for content creators. The NVIDIA Studio ecosystem might sound familiar to some of you, alongside the reason why the term studio can be applied to both laptops and PCs. Well, this Surface actually meets the above requirements since it features a dedicated NVIDIA RTX GPU. But let's take it bit by bit, starting with the design of Surface Studio. Microsoft's 14.4-inch notebook has a really special, if not unique, design. Probably the only such design I've seen for a 2-in-1. Well, maybe because this design is a Surface lineup only. Firstly, the aluminum chassis is extremely robust. The laptop's thickness might not seem notable at first, thanks to its shape, but in reality it almost reaches 2 cm. The weight itself is pretty acceptable for a laptop of such dimensions. The configuration we tested, which includes a Core i7 CPU, is around 2 kilos, well, 1.82 to be more specific. Because of the material that makes up the chassis, the only available color scheme is the typical aluminum grey, a more or less traditional choice of color for the Surface lineup. If it weren't for this edgy design, the laptop itself could very well resemble an Apple notebook, especially since both of them are on par in terms of build quality. The Surface Studio features a glossy display, and the pretty thick margins suggest we are dealing with a robust laptop. On top of that, we cannot overlook the most important feature of the design, which gives the laptop the ability to turn into a tablet in almost no time, thanks to the display's folding capability. Coupled with touchscreen features, this characteristic greatly increases the device's versatility, while Microsoft's Slim Pan 2 helps turn Surface Laptop Studio into a device many artists and graphic designers will find extremely attractive. Actually, if you take some time and wonder, you will realize that Surface Laptop Studio is actually a 3-in-1 notebook. Why? Because it has three different use cases. Laptop, tablet and with the screen halfway folded between the keyboard and the touchpad. Although this last mode does not look obvious at all. In fact, this last mode is a bit cringe, like I get it, it can be useful in many scenarios, but the screen itself does nothing but leans right against the chassis without any sign of rubber protection or whatsoever. If you add the aluminum build, I am not sure the laptop will be able to withstand much usage in this position without clearly straining the chassis. In terms of connectivity, I am not sure what I should make of this. In total, you benefit from two USB-C ports that support Thunderbolt 4, that's all. You do have an audio jack combo as well, but Come on, I mean, look at the size of this laptop. They took this straight out upside down. Apple finally decided to reintroduce additional ports on their notebooks, whereas Microsoft only gives you two Thunderbolt ports on a 15-inch laptop. At least the charger has an USB port. And no, it does not double as data transfer, I've checked that. For what it matters, you get the same Surface Connect interface other Surface laptops feature, but the laptop itself can very well be charged via USB-C. The keyboard has three lighting modes. The keys are stable and the stroke is satisfactory, regardless of which area of a certain key you are hitting, like middle, in the corner or sideways. The layout is decent, better than other laptops that feature the power button top right. In the case of Surface Laptop Studio, the power button is the second last in the upper row. Although this is not the greatest solution, it does prevent you from accidental presses. The up and down arrow keys are quite small, but thankfully they are the only ones this tiny. In addition, the spaces between the keys are actually okay. The touchpad is quite large and pressing it gives a pleasant and interesting feedback, although the keystroke itself is quite small. You are presented with a generous palm rest. Even though it can get a bit hot when the laptop is running, the heat never becomes irritating. The notebook does not come with a fingerprint reader, even though there would have been plenty of space for it. Given that Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio is not necessarily suited for a corporate environment, I can brush this aspect aside, especially since the integrated webcam is fully compatible with Windows Hello. Other than that, what's left to point out? 
Mm. Well, if you plan on using Surface Laptop Studio with the Slim Pen 2, the stylus is easy to handle and use, it snaps onto the sideways and back of the laptop very easily, and it charges really fast. And now let's get to performance and technical aspects. There is a just reason for why Surface Laptop Studio is quite heavy. If you take a look at the device's specifications, you will quickly notice this notebook is not just your average toy you can use only for browsing or office work. This thing right here is a powerful tool aimed at graphic designers. As a result, our review sample comes with an honorable 11th Gen Core i7 CPU, namely the 11370H, guarded by an NVIDIA RTX A2000 GPU that features 4 gigs of DDR6 memory. As for RAM, those 32 gigabytes might seem a bit excessive. The package is seasoned with a Hynix SSD and an Intel Wi-Fi 6 adapter that includes Bluetooth 5.1. In addition, Surface Laptop Studio has a glossy 14.4-inch touchscreen. The LCD panel offers up to 120Hz refresh rate and a 2400x1600 resolution, coupled with a maximum brightness of over 500 nits. In terms of compatibility, Dolby Vision is an included special treatment. What I found useful is the ability of letting the refresh rate switch between 60Hz and 120Hz automatically, depending on the use case. Even if we are not blessed with a fancy OLED display, the screen's quality is very good and the colors are nothing short from accurate. 100% sRGB and over 87% DCI-P3. The view angles are satisfactory as well, while the laptop's max brightness is just enough to let you see the screen even in bright, powerful light. The webcam has Full HD recording capabilities, while the microphone duo, because there's actually a pair of microphones, are designed to successfully catch and record distant sounds and voices. Surface Laptop Studio includes a four-speaker system, fully compatible with Dolby Atmos, as I said. The speaker's placement is specially designed to offer spatial audio. The 56 watt hour battery should, in theory, last for 18 hours, an honorable characteristic for ultra portable notebooks. The specifications sound pretty promising, but what's the actual performance? So, let's discuss the scores, shall we? Surface Laptop Studio got 1956 points in Cinebench R20, which is fairly weak, if you ask me. It's a bit disappointing because I had some expectations regarding this 11th gen Core i7 CPU that typically goes for a TDP of 35 watts. Things went on differently in 3D Mark. The laptop is a far cry from being a gaming laptop, but the results achieved in TimeSpy do nothing but highlight the actual performance and purpose of this model. We got a total of 4,355 points, an average scored from the graphics benchmark and the CPU test. The maximum TDP achieved by the GPU was 40 watts. These results are quite impressive. Not only that, you can even play games on Surface Laptop Studio. However, the RTX A2000's true potential is unleashed during photo and video processing. The last test we ran for today's notebook is the popular Cinebench. In short, the maximum transfer speed is 3514 megabytes per second alongside 3069 megabytes per second during reading and sequential writing tests. I've been playing with Surface Laptop Studio for a couple of days and now I can finally understand why it is so pricey. This is an extremely versatile laptop with a really good autonomy. Obviously, if you spend the whole day watching videos in 4K, you will eventually run out of juice much faster. However, if you carefully balance the screen brightness and the background apps, Surface Laptop Studio easily manages to withstand a whole day's worth of work. I even tried drawing on it in tablet mode and the results are pretty honorable. Not exactly my artistic skills, for I am talking about the laptop's feedback and performance. There is no such thing as lag. The Slim Pen 2 works amazing. The only thing I'd add is the fact that the stylus itself can be a bit bouncy when you hit the screen repeatedly, like when you're putting many dots on the screen. Nevertheless, the stylus is really comfy due to the fact that you can easily snap it onto many places across and around the laptop. Multimedia-wise, the laptop is okay, the speakers are loud and clear, although they kind of lack in base quality. The screen has good viewing angles and is bright enough. What is more, you can fold the screen and lean it between the keyboard and the trackpad in order to watch movies without the laptop occupying too much space on your desk or surface of choice. The webcam is excellent, so you can be sure the video calls will run smoothly. But despite all of these perks, I'm not a fan of such foldable systems at all. First, it makes the laptop look fragile. Then, even though the build quality is pretty high and durable, the system itself is kind of hard to use. For example, if you're in a hurry and grab the lid by its upper corner, there's a big chance you will trigger 
the folding mechanism. That's exactly what I did. Fixing the laptop in its intermediary position is aided by a magnetic system. It's an elegant solution, but unfortunately is not that sturdy and does not always keep the screen in place if you are not handling it with care. The 4-core and 8-thread CPU has proven to be just enough for my activities, but do mind that I did not use any advanced photo video editing or rendering tools. To be honest, I'm looking towards the 12th gen Intel CPU in this lineup. Why? Because, say, Core i7-1260P completely obliterates an 11th gen Core i7. The GPU performed as expected and the significant RAM quantity is obviously a great help for those who work with huge files and with apps that are really RAM hungry. In terms of temperature, Surface Laptop Studio has a moderate tendency of heating. Thanks to its aluminum, the heat is evenly distributed across the entire surface of the laptop. The important advantage is the complete lack of throttling and overheating. Therefore, the max temperature of the CPU was 85 degrees Celsius, while the GPU never went past 73. When it comes to the cooling system, the fans are not that noisy as you would expect, probably thanks to the numerous heat vents under the laptop. So, at the end of the day, I was able to come with a conclusion. Surface Laptop Studio is a really good asset for those who are in dire need of using a 2-in-1 laptop. Well, in this case, a 3-in-1. As far as costs go, the starting price is somewhere around 2000 euros for the Core i5 configuration, a model that features integrated graphics. For the high-end version, the price almost doubles up. As the French say, that's a lot of money, man. Unfortunately, the laptop's connectivity and weight does not justify the astronomical price. What you do get instead is a very well-made laptop that offers a high-quality display, flanked by really good autonomy and above-the-average processing power. After everything you've seen in this video, is Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio worth the money? Well, only you can decide that down below in the comments section. Actually, I'm extremely curious to read your opinion on this convertible, or even better, if you have one of these, feel free to share with all of us your experience in this video's comment section. And if you want to see more in-depth reviews, why not subscribe to our channel? More technicality stuff is on the way, so please subscribe, stay tuned, and thank you.